So for fans of work rates and innovative in-ring action, wrestling has never been better. Every major promotion is filled with performers who can really go, and from free TV to pay-per-view, we're treated to high-caliber matches every single week. But let's be honest though, a lot of the time wrestling peaks with the athletes' entrances. The moment you appear at the top of the ramp is the make-or-break moment. Get it right and you've got the crowd on side for pretty much whatever you want to do. Yet it's ultimately all about that connection. Whether you've got a theme song that gets the full arena singing along, some crowd participation or call and response that everyone just needs to be a part of, or just simply an aura that makes you impossibly watchable. Fans will be anticipating your arrival every single time. I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 most over entrances in wrestling today. Number 10, Walter, or Gunter if you're gonna be like that. If the purpose of any entrance is to set a tone, then no one is doing the job better than the entrance of Walter, or if you absolutely must, Gunter. It's no coincidence that the opening strings of Dvorak's Symphony No. 9 Movement 4 inspired John Williams' Jaws theme. When Walter's music hits, you know a big shark is about to arrive. It's the perfect mix of sophistication and fear. Walter's ethos is that the ring is scared. He respects the craft of wrestling and has a piece of classical music to bloody highlight that. He's a brutal man with a simple, crushing style of work, and that is all conveyed in his theme. Indeed, it's the simplicity that is so brilliant here. A stark black and white screen, then Walter standing in silhouette on the ramp. It is all you need to strike fear into the heart of any opponent. Then out he comes, resplendent in his trench coat and severe haircut. And even to a complete wrestling novice, they'll be able to tell you that from the off, this guy means bloody business. His entrance is as much what he doesn't do as what he does. No posing, no posturing, no pandering, just a march down to the ring, ready to get the job done. Number 9. Ronda Rousey In the post-Jim Johnston era of WWE themes, few tunes really stand out. With that in mind, Ronda Rousey's use of Joan Jett's bad reputation stands out all the more, as it sounds quite unlike anything else in the company's songbook. Kudos to the accounts department for securing the rights to the actual song and not just a sound alike, as it couldn't be more suited for Rousey. In her early face run especially, it summed her up to a T, happy to be here but ready to cause some trouble. As soon as the riff kicks in, the fans are on their feet. It was the most exciting moment of this year's admittedly quite bad Royal Rumble by far. Rousey's aura is such that she doesn't need to do much else to excite the WWE universe. She swans, swaggers, or stomps her way to the ring, depending on her mood and how the crowd are reacting to her, and the crowd basks in her legitimacy and superstar status. Number 8. Kazuchika Okada the first time Okada emerges onto a New Japan stage once all the pandemic business is properly over is going to be a seismic reaction. That company can boast a stacked roster, but there is simply no one around more exciting than the Rainmaker, and there's no doubt that the New Japan crowds will make that clear when they're allowed to do so. Like many of the top stars, it just takes one sound to let you know we're about to get into it. In Okada's case, the ching of the poker chip hitting the ground. This most simple of noises is usually enough to send the fans crazy, and that's before Okada's theme even kicks in. And it is one of the promotion's finest, a ludicrously excessive hair metal number that suits the performer magnificently, whether working face or heel. He doesn't need to play to the crowd or work particularly hard to get them behind him. He dresses great, has an abundance of swagger, and effortlessly reassures the crowd that they're gonna have a bloody good time. Number 7. John Moxley WWE's Dean Ambrose was a great modern creation, but he was exactly that, a creation. From his seething lunatic personality to his anarchy symbol logo, he was a performer playing a part. While John Moxley is still very much a gimmick, from the moment he appears to the crowd to Wild Thing, it's entirely apparent that we're looking at something very close to the man himself. Moxley's presentation is perfect, and in a moment it tells you everything that we need to know about the guy. He likes a fun. Right. He believes in himself, and he doesn't give much credence to what anyone else thinks of him. It helps that he is absolutely white hot in general right now, but his theme is one that you can't help but sing along to, and it is clear the fans feel a real connection to him as he walks among them. He conveys a real everyman appeal in his entrance that gets you in his corner right away. Number 6. Jungle Boy 
Vince McMahon has put his hands in his pocket once or twice to nab existing songs for his wrestlers, and done so rather reluctantly, one would imagine. AEW's Tony Khan, though, has a much better ear for music, and understands fully the power of a proper song to quickly get a wrestler over. Case in point, Baltimore's Tarzan Boy given to Jungle Boy, one of AEW's four pillars and an exciting young wrestler who the vast majority of the TV audience will never have seen before. The impossibly catchy tune is feel-good, carefree stuff to mirror the vibe that Jungle Boy is giving off. You're just happy to see him. And the sing-alongs are amongst the best in the industry at present. Everyone wants to join in in welcoming this nice young man to the ring, setting you up perfectly to enjoy him strutting his stuff. The song and the performer alike are a guaranteed good time. Number 5. Shinsuke Nakamura Even if the WWE are really intending on wasting him for the rest of his contract, Shinsuke Nakamura's entrance will go down in history as one of the best of modern times. And it all starts with the abrasive brilliance of the theme's intro, a violin scrape to shake off the cobwebs. His music is a singular piece for a singular performer, its orchestral pomp and poise a million miles from the stodgy rock that most stars are lumbered with. And in spite of its instrumental nature and quite complex composition and tricky range, just about every fan in the building will be singing along. When Nakamura emerges, he's living up to the preceding music. He walks like no one on earth has ever walked, contorting his arms and face for no real reason and somehow just pulling it off. He twists and turns around the ring in a manner that's truly odd but totally in character. The fans go wild even though they know that most likely he's going to be given a short, inconsequential match before being placed back on the shelf again for a while. But the entrance is so bloody good we can kind of overlook that unfortunate truth. Number 4. Becky Lynch Sooner or later, the great Becky Lynch heel experiment will end, and WWE will acknowledge that, like it or not, they have a generational babyface on their hands. From the moment the cheers ring out in Lynch's anthemic theme, crowds have been on their feet more so than hearing any other WWE song since 2019. To give Lynch her due, she's been doing everything she can to get over as a heel, including modifying her entrance. The plucky underdog vibes have gone in place of ludicrous outfits, and she's adopted a swagger that fits just as well with the tune as the man. Man did. As great as Big Time Bex has been though, sooner or later WWE will need to put Lynch back in her proper place, because her entrance just gets a response that few can equal. It's not flashy or complicated, it's simply a song that people want to sing along to and a star they desperately want to see. Number 3. CM Punk Almost six months after returning to wrestling, we're still not bored with CM Punk. Now There were rumblings that the novelty would quickly wear off, that he'd be better used as a special attraction, but instead we've seen Punk nearly every week on AEW TV and it's been nothing but a good time. And you want proof of that? Well, witness the response when Cult of Personality blasts from the PA. From the opening crunch of Static, everyone in the venue is a buzz. Befitting one of the few wrestlers who can claim to be genuinely cool, it's a song that you'd listen to in your own time and one that sounds like it would be written about Punk despite being more than 30 years old. From there, Punk doesn't have to do much to get the crowd on their feet, though the clobbering time routine is still great fun. He's a bona fide megastar, and that's clear for the world to see the second that he walks through that curtain. Whatever AEW does with CM Punk for however long he stays around, it's hard to imagine him getting anything less than a nuclear reaction every single time. Those seven years of silence have made him more important than ever. Number 2. Adam Cole Leaving aside his promo, and stellar ring work, the sheer superstar quality of Adam Cole's entrance allows you to overlook his relatively small stature and buy him straight away as being a top, top star. His NXT entrance was great, but in AEW his march to the ring is better thanks to an improved theme and a crowd just buzzing to join in with his shtick. He has every step down to a T, from the arms aloft swaggering as the tune starts, to his boom on the apron and the pièce de résistance, the build and release of Adam Cole, baby! Fans can't get enough of it, they need to be a part of it, and every time an entire arena bellows along with his catchphrases, he looks a bigger star. It helps that he's masterful at conducting the fans. It took him a week or so to work out the timings for his AEW theme, but once he was there, he was leading crowds of thousands along with him. Cole listens to what the viewers want, tweaks as necessary, and delivers time and time again. And number one, Chris Jericho. To hear some fans tell it, Chris Jericho is becoming a drain on AEW TV, a figure with power who keeps younger stars down and takes up more screen time than he merits. And while there's an argument to be made on that topic, to hear the crowd response when his theme hits, he's right up there with the industry's biggest. Now, Judas will go down in history as being a great wrestling theme. Personally, I think it absolutely sucks, but that's just me. I just don't like Fozzie. I, I, I really don't like Fozzie. But you know what? I can't deny the sing-alongs that it inspires every 
every single week. Fans don't just want to join in with the chorus, they know this one from top to bottom. AEW even based part of a match around this, with MJF banning Jericho from playing the track on the way to the ring. But no matter, because the crowd filled in for Fozzie, while Le Champion watched on in awe, clearly touched by this tribute. And probably thinking to himself, that's the most an audience has ever engaged with Fozzie. By sheer virtue of the crowd's love for the song, Jericho can justify being on TV more often than not. It's a huge part of the AEW experience. The crowd wants to make their voices heard, and what happens from there is just a bonus. And there we go, my friends. Those were the 10 most over entrances in wrestling today. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. That's Dice with a C, where I do all of my streaming outside of work. And it'd be great to see you over there. Recently, I've just gone through Sifu. I am a broken man. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Even though we focused on entrances today, I'm going to try and end this video with a bit of positivity for you, my friend. Yes, you listening to this video. You deserve love, happiness, and success, and do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise, all right? You are a massive ledge, and I want you to go out there and absolutely smash it today. I believe in you. You need to believe in yourself as well. Big love to you, my friend. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.